What's up, everybody? Um, finally, the weekend is over. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, okay. This episode is fucking crazy. I am not sure what the hell is going on with this Alcazar Delgado situation. Now I'm confused. When the CIA dude came to the door, it's mad confusing. I don't even know. Um, here's a theory. Maybe Lorenzo Alcazar is not really a arms dealer or in the mob. Maybe he was undercover. I mean, you can't really be an arms dealer and a CIA agent at the same time, not unless you're crooked, which probably he was, but um, there is a possibility he could have been undercover or on an assignment when he was in Port Charles portraying Lorenzo. Possibility. Maybe not. Who knows? Because there's at, at this moment, there's no telling where the hell this storyline is going. There's absolutely no telling where it's going because I'm not even sure anymore what the hell is going on. But I am sure that Lorenzo is really Tomas. That I'm positive. It, it just adds up. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. It's unlikely that I'm wrong about it. Um, When Blair slapped the shit out of Todd down, that shit echoed. I was like, wow, she slapped the fuck out of him. But it ain't the first time Blair slapped Todd. It ain't probably going to be the, it ain't going to be the last time, most likely. So I'm sure he's used to it. Um, but I didn't, I didn't believe for two seconds that Todd had anything to do with the CIA coming to get Tomas or Lorenzo. I didn't believe that because for one, why would he do that when Todd didn't, I mean, I doubt it. Seriously. I'm sure he just wanted to bust Tomas in front of everybody. So I doubt he had the CIA come and take Tomas away and all that dumb shit. I doubt it. Um, Carly is such a liar. She talking about she don't care about Lorenzo, Tomas, whatever. And I'm thinking in my head, like, bitch, what the fuck you go to Landview for? If you didn't care, you didn't you shouldn't have went to Landview. Then she talking about she got a daughter and a business to run. If that were true, you would have never went to Landview in the first place. You would have let Ty Todd and Sky go without you. There was really no point in you going. You didn't really say much when you were even here. You didn't say too much. So there was no point in going. I think Carly just went for the drama, of course. Um, Because, of course, Carly is such a drama queen, so that's why she went. Carly, just dumb. Um, But when Blair told the CIA agent that she would get Dorian involved, I'm like, oh, shit. That's the one thing you, if you, if you know your one life to live history, then you know, for one, you do not want Dorian, Kramer, Lord, Vickers, Buchanan, Hayes, and whatever, Santee, whatever, on your ass. Dorian is as crazy as they get, and her as a senator is laughable. Dorian, you do, you just don't want Dorian Lord on your ass. Like, seriously, you just don't. That is a bad combination to have Dorian breathing down your neck, I'm telling you. Very bad. Um, but Blair, Taya, and Sky, I don't know where the fuck they think they going. How the hell do they plan on finding Tomas? They don't even know where he is. How do you plan on finding somebody if you don't know where he is? Like, they don't know where he is. So how do you plan on finding him? That's just dumb. So I'm guessing they're just going to charter a jet or something like that and just go flying around the damn world till they find him. My first, my guess is they probably going to go to, to Paris maybe or New Orleans, you know, where they found Irene Manning's agency. So my guess, you know, they got a few leads, but not a lot. Um. Anyway, I just want to see all this shit unfold because I'm, I'm very curious as to where the storyline is going. My guess is we're probably going to see Ted King most likely in January when the um, Prospect Park, when that deal ends. That's most likely when we're going to see Ted King because... 
Ted King signed a contract with Prospect Park last year when they thought it was going to align. He's one of those people that signed the deal. So my guess is we're not going to see him till January. Um, I just can't wait to see all this shit unfold because he got some explaining to do. And I can't wait to find out what the fuck is going on. Um, for those who don't know, Taya Delgado, like I said Friday in the comments, she has another brother besides Tomas. His name is Delmonico. My guess is, well, they never said it, but what if Tomas and Delmonico are twins? Taya never mentioned it or anything like that, but I'm sure it's probably going to come to light soon that Delmonico is really Luis. It's possible. Um, if you don't know, go on Google, type in Taya Delgado, look under siblings. It says that she has two brothers and a sister. So, you know, if you want to look it up. Um, this Dante Lulu situation, they're a bunch of horny people. <laughs> but anyway, Lulu don't seem very enthusiastic about this baby. Like she, This is what I don't like about Lulu. She's wishy-washy. One minute she's all happy about this kid, you know, the prospect of having a baby. Then the next minute she seems like, you know, she's like a Debbie Downer about it. Make up your mind. Like, it's either you want the kid or you don't. Well, I mean, you know, it's either she don't want it right now or she just need to make up her mind before everything starts to happen. Dante seems more happy about this than she do, which is surprising because I don't know, you know, not a lot of guys are actually happy about the prospect of having kids right away, but... He's, he's happy about it um, more than she seems to be. And then she came up this, well, Dante came up this dumbass idea for him to babysit Maxie at night and for Lulu to babysit her during the day. That's just the dumbest shit I ever heard. Because what about your marriage? Like, seriously, how y'all gonna get it in? And Dante and Lulu's one year wedding anniversary is in a few weeks. I think on the 23rd of this month. So it's in a few weeks. Um, then Lulu came up with a number, another dumbass idea to have Maxie move into their loft, which makes completely no sense at all because their loft is mad small. So I think that's just a dumb idea. Um, I think, I mean, it's just dumb because like Dante said, their bed takes up half the apartment. And then she's talking about getting an ear mattress. I'm like, you can't not have a surrogate mother sleep on an ear mattress. That's just dumb. Um, and then she suggested that Maxie take their bed and move to. The, I'm like, nope, that's not gonna work either because Dante not having that. So time for Plan C, which is get a bigger house. I mean, come on now. When Patrick and Robin got married after they had Emma they got a bigger house because their apartment was not big enough for the three of them. So they got a bigger house. But the thing about that was Robin and Patrick are both are both doctors. So of course they can afford it. But I think Dante and Lulu, I know that they're not going to want to go to Tracy or Sonny or anybody for the money, but I think they might want to ask Sonny to cut a bigger check. Because I think they need a bigger place. I think they should move into the suburbs where Pat, you know, the same neighborhood Patrick living. What is it, Queens Point? I think they should move into that neighborhood. I mean, houses I doubt are that cheap. I mean, are that expensive. You know, they could get a hundred K from Sonny. I mean, Sonny already wrote them a check for a hundred thousand dollars earlier this year after they got married. So take the money, get a bigger place. Makes perfect sense. Um, I just feel like Maxie moving in here. I think that that would just be too much, and it's not big enough for the. And I don't think she would probably go for that anyway. And as far as the contract is concerned, I don't think Maxie would most likely take offense to the contract because it is standard. And you need when you dealing with a surrogate, you need a contract. It don't matter if it's a friend or family. You know, just to legalize everything. I think they should get the contract. I don't think Maxie would be upset about it. It's just business. Anyway, the Maxie, Ellie, and Spinelli scenes, I liked it. Um, I'm not sure what to make of Spinelli right now. As far as his feelings are concerned for Maxie and Ellie, I'm not sure. 
my thing about it is what if he really is I don't know like I don't know what to make it how to how to come to an, a, a, a conclusion when he told her that he don't approve of her being a surrogate I think it's it, it, in my eyes I think he could be saying that because he still cares about her well you know he's concerned about her welfare or he you know other people might spin it as he's still in love with her I think of course he still loves her of course even Spinelli admitted that but I think it may be what I just said. It's just concern. I mean, Mac felt the same way. When you've been dealing with somebody as long as Spinelli's been around Maxie, I mean, that concern and that care and that love, it don't go away just because you're dating somebody new. It don't ever just go away like that. So I think it was just out of concern. And he's, you know, a little, of course, he's very concerned about this because being a surrogate, Especially with her heart condition and stuff like that. That's a lot to think about. Because that's like you putting your life on the line for this kid. For this baby. That you're trying to, you know, carry for your friends. That's a lot to think about. So I can understand where that, you know, where they're coming from. And why they're not on board with this. Because she does have a heart condition. I'm surprised nobody mentioned that on the, on the show. I'm surprised Lulu, Dante, Maxie, none of Mac, none of them mentioned it. But I think it might come up when they start doing the shots and, you know, going more into the procedure. Um, I love the way, you know, Ellie was right, though. I think her, Maxie, and Spinelli should all sit down like they did and talk and lay every fucking thing out on the table. Because, like she said, if they don't discuss what Maxie asked Spinelli to do, I just feel like it's just going to be a bunch of tension. But even if they do discuss it, I think there's still going to be tension because Maxie is still obviously pissed that Spinelli chose Ellie over her. Of course, she's still going to be mad about that. I ain't like that shade that she was throwing at him, though, or that attitude and shit. I'm like, you can't be mad. Like, you... She had Spinelli for like, what, four or five years? And she played a bunch of games and she cheated on him with Franco and took him for granted and all that shit. So I really don't blame Spinelli for not choosing her because why go why go down that same path if you don't have to? When you're with a chick who's not going to do none of that to you, that, you know, not do the things to you that Maxie did. So I think he made the right choice, but I hope he made it with a clear head. You know, he really thought about it. But um, I just feel like Maxie has no right to get an attitude with Spinelli over the choice that he made. And her by her telling him that she having a baby and it's by Dante and all that shit, you could tell, I could see, I saw the gleam in her eye. She did it on purpose just to make him jealous a little bit, see if he gonna get jealous. You know, that's Maxie. She always got to play a game, of course, and that's why her and Spinelli are not together today. It's because of them games. She need to stop playing around. Anyway, um, is it me or did Helena Cassadine seem a little nice when she was having that conversation with Robert? Because she she wasn't really threatening him or nothing like that. Not you know, well in the beginning she did because she said that he was willing to risk his life. And then she kept going around in circles about how Faison wasn't alive. I'm like, seriously, Helena, like somebody believe in that bullshit. Faison doesn't have no money. You're a Cassadon. You're filthy freaking rich because of Mikos. You're filthy rich. So, of course, Faison is going to come to you for the money. Of course. Who else could he go to? He needed you for this plan. Because you're the only diabolical piece of shit that he know. And I do mean that in a good way. Because I do love Helena Cassadon. She's like one of my favorites. She's so damn wicked and evil. It'll make your head spin. You got to be on top of your game when you're talking to that skeleton. But um, I love the scenes where her and Robert, though, because, you know, it's old school GH. Old school. Um, but, of course, I knew Helena was BSing that she didn't know Faison was alive because that's bullshit. Her and Faison were tight like glue. So I already knew if he was alive, of course she knew. And when the fuck is Nicholas coming back? Like, seriously, I ain't see him in like a year, almost two years. I don't know when he coming back. It was good that I saw it was him that Robert called on the phone. So he's the reason why Helena is back in Port Charles. Darken in the uh, Cassadine mansion. 
and that's that thing that she said about tacky reality shows. That shit was funny. But um, Anna, she need to wake up because she's like really falling into these games with Phazon, and it's and I think I know what Phazon's plan is. His plan is to get her out of the country, out of town. You know, to take that weekend getaway that he was talking about, just to lure her away from Robert. And from Port Charles, so I guess he could make his move. Most likely, he probably gonna try to tie her up or some shit like that to force her to love him. So I'm hoping she realize what the hell is going on. Um, cause I'm ready, kind of ready for the storyline to end, so Robin can hurry up and come the fuck back, so that way that doctor chick won't keep on sweating Patrick, cause it's annoying. Um, but anyway, I don't see good things happening for anybody whenever Helena and Faison are back in town. I don't see shit good happening, so but I do have some very disturbing news actually. John McBain is gonna become a full fledged member of the PCPD. So if anybody know how long his contract is on General Hospital, let me know because uh he's boring. But anyway, I'll see everybody tomorrow. I'll let you. Leave your um, comments in the comment box.